I'll ask you a question, Stuart. Yes. I heard Rudy today on a lecture talk about um, not expressing oneself, um, that, that it could cost a lot but to take it in and do the work internally and not express yourself because of what it could potentially cost. Um, so can you talk about discernment between expressing oneself and internalizing and doing the work inside without that outward expression? Uh, I just know that was very well. I mean, look, uh, sometimes we have really deep, you know, a lot of times we have really deep experiences in these meditation classes. And before we absorb them and really make them integral to our system inside, we begin to talk to other people about them and we drain our energy out of us, you know, and we let go of the entire experience. So what Rudy is talking about, and I often talk about this too, is the conservation of energy. You know, when you have deep inner experiences, you know, don't be so ready to smooth them out. Don't be so ready to and absorb them. Let them become part of your inner life. Let them find an organic place inside you. Let them, and then eventually, if you do that, you're not going to have any need to even talk about them to anybody, you know, because your actions, the way you live, will become an expression of that experience. I mean, I, you know, I, this happened to me very early on in Rudy's meditation practice, where I had an amazing meditation in his class. And when I went home, I practically floated across, I was like three feet above New York City when I was walking back to my apartment. And I remember meeting a friend of mine in the hallway, a good friend of mine, and we started talking. And I immediately started telling him about this experience. And by the time I got finished telling him about it, all of the energy that experienced was inside this person. And I had completely drained myself of the experience. And to me, it was an amazing lesson. And I just said to myself, Stuart, never do this again. I mean, this friend of mine lit up like a light bulb and I felt completely drained <laughs> of the experience. And I said, Stuart, don't do this, absorb it. Let it find a home inside you, let it build you inside. And then let it, you know, then let your actions, the way you live, determine whether or not you're sharing that experience with people instead of just dumping the whole experience on somebody and draining yourself. You know, basically you drain away your life doing that. And people so often do that. They're so ready to talk about the things that happen to them instead of taking it inside you know, letting it germinate, let it find its home, let it strengthen you inside. And then, as I said earlier, you know, your actions, the way you live will determine, you know, how that experience will affect your external life. So, you know, what Rudy talked about is very, very wise. And I remember I learned so much in what I did with that friend of mine that I never ever talk to him again about my spiritual experiences. I would talk about baseball, I would talk about basketball, I would talk about literature, he used to like literature a lot, but I never went into what I was, the energy I was getting from Rudy's classes, simply because, you know, he wasn't really ready for it. And then I was giving away the essence of my spiritual development to somebody who really didn't care about anything that had to do with the spiritual life. So, you know, it's a very important way to function in the world because we're often so ready to just give away everything that happens to us. You know, it comes right off the end of our tongues and we, you know, and the whole energy gets deleted inside us. So, I mean, I, I always suggest that after meditation, after a deep inner work, 
to just, you know, conserve it, you know, take an hour, an hour and a half and just relax and let the class absorb inside. Let yourself open to the new experience of whatever takes place for you in the class. And don't be so ready to talk about it to people in most cases are not even ready to hear about it. They're not even interested. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? Uh, Stuart. Yes. Did you ever speak about your experiences with Rudy? You know, uh, no, no. I just used to sit there and take energy. I wasn't interested in. I never, I never really had a conversation. Really. I did, but not. You know, I, I would when I would go to his gallery. My purpose for being there was not to talk to him, not to discuss anything with him, but to simply sit there and take the shock key. And when I learned that, I said, Stuart, you know, just go and open, receive the Shakti. I mean, no matter what he did, this energy was floating off of him. It was coming out of him. And I wasn't going to allow myself not to receive it. And I, I never was interested in having some profound conversation with Rudy about my spiritual life. I really wasn't. It didn't matter. You know, I used to ask little questions every now and then. Yeah, I did. But mostly I was there to take in the energy. I was there to receive the Shakti. I wasn't there to socialize with Rudy. Although I used to go out to a lot of restaurants with him and movies and parties and all kinds of places I used to go with him. But I never really socialized. I just kept, I was grateful to be there for a rabbi to spend time around the great master. And I wanted to just receive the energy, the Shakti, you know, without getting into all kinds of conversations. I mean, I remember once I went to him and I told him about a great experience I had. And he was sitting there with a friend of his and he just looked at me and he said, the schmuck thinks he's having a spiritual life. <laughs> I said, oh God. You know, Stuart, just shut your mouth and take in the energy, you know? Take in the Shakti. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, look, I spent a lot of time around Rudy, a lot of time, probably more than a lot of people. And uh, we, you know, went to Chinatown. My God, almost every restaurant in Chinatown liked Chinese food, Rudy. We socialized with the movies, we went to, you know, all kinds of things, you know, parties. I mean, but I wasn't there to socialize with him. I was there to listen to him. I was there to take in his wisdom. I was there not to have to prove how spiritual I am. But, you know, the schmuck thinks he's having a spiritual life. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I was there to listen, to take in the wisdom of a great master. That was my purpose for being around you. And I always was so grateful that I was capable of spending so much time around him. I mean, I, I told this story a lot. I'll never forget when I was living in his house and I, the first three months I was living on the second floor of his house and it was like, 2,000 square foot space full of incredible museum quality art. And I was living there by myself, you know? And it, it was amazing, you know? And then he started inviting all these people to come stay there. And before I knew it, there were 10, 15 people staying on the second floor of his apartment. <laughs> I would get home at night. I didn't know where I was going to sleep. And it was extra. And I once complained to him. I said, "Rudy, I don't really sleep." And he and he looked at me. And he looked. I'll never forget this. Is what was the one of the great teachings of my life. He looked at a weed growing in a crack in a New York City sidewalk, and he said, "That weed has more courage than you do." 
why are you there? You're there to get what I have to teach you. You're there to learn. You're there to build a system that can enable you to have a spiritual life. And whatever you have to put up with, you know, you'll have to put up with in order to get there. And it was wonderful because like two, three weeks later, he came up to me and he said, look, I go away a lot. You know, I go to India, I go travel. And every time I leave, I want you to stay in my apartment. I mean, it broke my heart. It brought a tear to my eye, you know? But I never said, Rudy, can I stay in your apartment while you're gone, you know? Came up to me and he said, I know how hard this is. I want you to stay in my apartment when I leave. And he had a beautiful apartment upstairs, you know, big, spacious, wonderful Chinese bed, <laughs> one of these canopy beds, you know, from China. You know, I mean, it was, you know, I mean, it all works out from not having the courage of a weed in New York City to, Stuart, I would like you to stay in my apartment when I go. So I wasn't there to socialize with Rudy. I was there to listen to him, to learn from him, to grow because of what he had to teach me. And yes, I asked questions occasionally, but I was very careful about the questions I asked because the schmuck thinks he's having a spiritual life. You know, I, in one of my books, I said I was in the University of Schmuckdom. I finally graduated from the University of Schmuckdom, you know? Does anyone else have a question? Yes, Stuart. Yes, Matt. May I ask you about a uh, particular passage in one of Rudy's books? Excuse me, I didn't. May get... I ask you about a, a passage in one of Rudy's books? Yes, I'll try to answer. Well, it, it has to do with levels, and uh, this is a, a a portion of the paragraph. Because of my own nature, I'm trying very hard to change the level of my being, the level of my spiritual work, and the level of my life. And I mean exactly that. Not well, one level, but many levels simultaneously. The nature of creation is that we have multiple levels or multiple dimensions of capacity. Well, I talk about it all the time that in transforming ourselves inside, you know, transforming ourselves from, you know, a lower level of consciousness and the way we interact with other people to a more human level of love and compassion. Those are the levels he was talking about on a human level. And then there are spiritual levels, you know, where you transform the human to the divine. And then that opens whole new levels of work that are, you know, that emanate from the cosmos, from the marriage of the human soul to the soul of spirit and the, you know, the soul of God in the universe. I mean, all of this are different levels of being, you know, and in order to move from level to level, we have to please try and, Matt, try and sit up and well, try to sit up and do the meditation because, you know, uh, all of that is moving from you know, one level to another, transforming ourselves. And initially on the, the most basic human levels, we have to learn how to be happy people. We have to learn how to have, you know, uh, compassion and love and, and not just periodically when we read a sad article about starving people. And I mean, I saw a newscast today about the people in Sudan you know, living, you know, it could break your heart. What happens to these people is so poor and they get the brunt of global warming down there, you know? And they, they have a hundred roads in the whole country <laughs> they're getting the brunt of global. Anyway, it could break your heart, see, but it should be compassion in our everyday life with everyone that we interact with. Learning how to listen to life, learning how 
to allow, I always talk about it, life to become our teacher. These are all different levels of consciousness that evolve inside a human being. And they evolve because we develop a chakra system that enables us to do these things. And then the human transforms itself into the divine. So all of this are different levels of being. And basically that's what Rudy is talking about. You know, and we owe this to ourselves. I mean, look, everyone in this class should be here for one purpose, to have a spiritual life. I mean, otherwise, why do this? You come here to stare at me in a monitor? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense unless there's a need inside to have a spiritual life. And that need will help develop the chakra system, which will enable us to move from level to level of consciousness as human beings and then as human beings transforming our humanity, you know, and developing a spiritual life. And he's talking about that. I, and, you know, it took me a long time to learn this. I mean, I was a pretty crazy kid when I was younger. Very unhappy, very angry, very, you know, uh, rebel against everything in life, you know. And it took years for me to learn how to transform that into compassion, love, into higher levels of my own humanity but working on myself every single day over years, those transformations took place. This is very important. Otherwise we get stuck. You know, we have anger inside that we never free ourselves of, you know? And you can't live that way. It, it has to change. And change is essential. I mean, Rudy always compared, you know, he said, you know, on Madison Avenue, they always talk about the new, you know, cleanser, the new shampoo, the new, you understand? Well, then there's the new us, that part of us that evolves out of who we were to the next level of what we become as human beings. Ultimately, to become one with God. And this is one of the keys to Rudy's work, learning how to do this. And you don't learn it intellectually, you learn it by experience, you know? It becomes experiential. You know, working on the chakras transforms, you know, all the different areas that are connected with spirit into a higher level of consciousness. And then it becomes experiential, not something, well, I know this in my brain but then I can't do it. Why can't I do it if I know this in my head, you know? It doesn't work that way. It works organically as an unfolding of consciousness in a human being. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Does anyone else have a question? would like to ask. I have a question, Stuart. Can yes. you speak uh, a little bit more about the chakra system? Is there more to know uh, in this way about the chakra system and energizing it to bring us to the next level? All uh, right, well, listen, try to sit up and do the meditation, uh, Jenny, because otherwise, uh, okay, that's, that's a, a, big, a big answer. Uh, look, uh, chakras are located, in, as you all know, in different parts of the body. Each chakra is a link to higher creative energy in the universe. Each chakra is connected to the spine. The spine is the only place in a human being where energy arises. You know, each chakra has a function. Understand the heart is the seat of love. The heart is the seat of joy. The heart is the seat of happiness. Those are the highest levels of, you know, God's language on the earth. 
everybody is struggling to find some happiness in it. The heart chakra is the seat. The problem is that people don't have enough inner strength to open the heart chakra. Understand the chakra below the navel, you know, is really the key to opening the rest of the chakras. Because, you know, the Japanese call it the hara, the Chinese, the tatien. They talk about chi. Chi is the power in a human being. Chi is the rootedness. It's the grounding and it's the foundation that makes it possible to open the rest of the chakra system. Because we initially build that chi inside ourselves, when the heart chakra opens, it has foundation to rest upon and it can stay open. And the, the mind, you know, the third eye, the seat of knowledge, the seat of wisdom, so, but that knowledge and wisdom gets congested in thinking and analyzing and rational living and all that stuff. And it, the mind gets so full of all of that thinking and thinking and tension that there's no room for real knowledge to come, which is knowledge that comes from an infinite place in the universe. So the mind has to be quiet. We have to learn how to master the tension that's in the mind. You master it by learning how to bring the focus of your attention to the chakra below the navel. And once the mind gets quiet, we can receive real knowledge, real wisdom. We can learn how to distinguish between what's real in life and what's an illusion. We begin to see with an inner eye, the third eye. And that opens, it's like, it, it just cuts right through the veil of illusion. And then we learn how to use everything in life, whatever happens to us in life, as an opportunity to grow, not as an opportunity to defeat ourselves. So all of these things, chakra, you know, then you have the throat chakra, you know? I mean, I mean, it's like the throat is the manifestation. When we talk, it's the manifestation of Om in the world. And our conversation is clear, depending upon how developed the throat chakra is. Otherwise, people, when they communicate with each other, you know, it's like static on a radio. You know, how, you, know you hear a fifth, a third of what somebody is really talking about, because there's so much tension inside them, and because the throat chakra is closed. So all of these chakras are part of two things, the development of our humanity and the development of a spiritual life. And then you have the sex chakra, you know, which is the key to the transforming of the human to the spiritual. It's truly what Tantra is all about, transformation of the human to the divine. And in the, in the sexual area, it's the first place where the yin, the yang, the male, female, the Shiva, Shakti, uh, where that marriage takes place. And that marriage gives birth to the force of Kundalini. Kundalini is an energy at the base of the spine. And when Kundalini rises up the spine, it's the pathway to enlightenment. All of this works together. And a human being literally is a point in a triangle. You know, and that point in the triangle is centered at the chakra right below the navel. And that point it allows us to be in the world and to be connected to spirit at exactly the same time. So the chakra system is the key to all of this. And without a highly developed chakra system, you know, I don't care how much you know about cosmology and cosmogony and you know the cosmos and chakras, it's all nonsense unless it becomes living experience. And unless the practice of inner work develops the kind of system that allows you to have a direct link to higher energy in the universe. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope that's clear, you know? Yes. Because this is so important. I mean, this is the essence of Rudy's teaching, the development of a chakra system. Because without that development, I, you know, I don't know how anybody, you know, 
I always talk about three elements to this work. And that should really clarify it even more. The first one is our connection with spirit. Spirit is a very powerful energy. And if we don't have the inner strength to open and receive it, you know, I mean, it just burn, it'll burn us alive inside. It's so powerful. As I always say, you know, it's like in the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna reveals himself, if the light of a thousand suns suddenly appeared in the sky, this is really powerful energy. It's not some milk toast kind of superficial sweetness that people substitute for a spiritual life. This is fire, it's light, it's vision, it's cosmic energy. And we need to have a very incredible deep inner strength and able to receive that energy and transform it into love, into joy, you know, into compassion, kindness. The second element is life itself. We all know the power of life. It's like a giant vacuum cleaner that sucks everybody dry, the external world. We need to have great inner power to be able to deal with our karma. And the third element is the Kundalini force, which is also a very powerful energy. And if we don't have that centeredness inside, you know, the Kundalini force can also burn us up. So we need to build a system inside that is strong enough to be connected to spirit, to work out our karma, and to activate Kundalini so that we can really find a pathway to enlightenment. And if the chakra system isn't highly developed in a human being, forget about it, you know? You know, I don't care if you know all the words from the Bhagavad Gita and you this and that, and all the Sanskrit and the monasteries and the you know, holy and the Dalek, it's all bullshit, unless that system is developed inside a human being. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Everyone? I know I repeat this a lot, but it should be repeated because we all, we all have to continue to remind ourselves about the most basic things in, in doing meditation because they are the things that really make us grow. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, if there are no more questions, then uh, there'll be a class on Wednesday, same time. And again, God bless you all, thank you. I mean, uh, these Zoom classes are like a miracle. And I am so grateful to be here, to be sharing my life with all of you, whatever I've learned with all of you. And I know the whole purpose of being here is to give it all away. And there's nothing that fills my heart more than seeing people that truly want to take it, that truly want to learn how to get enlightened, how to open to God, how to have a spiritual life. So God bless you all. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on, you know, on uh, Wednesday. Thank you, Stuart. God bless you. Good night, Good night Stuart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate chocolate. Yeah.